Hi, it's Andrew here, and I want to talk about curriculum vitae or resumes for job applications for junior doctors and final year students, so particularly focusing on those postgraduate year one, two, and three applications. I've done a video on this previously. At that time, I was a lot of the way through my training. Now I'm in a different role where I finished training and I'm regularly reviewing applications of junior doctors for intern and RMO positions. And so I've gained a few other insights that I wanted to deliver through this video. I've got four main recommendations. Number one is quality over quantity. Always consider your CV or resume being a highlights document. And therefore you wanna try and reduce the number of items so your highlight or strength items can really come through and be noticed and not be lo lost in the noise of many other items that are not as valuable. There's a distinct difference between a CV and a resume. A CV is meant to be more comprehensive and a resume is meant to be more like a highlights document. A CV is more appropriate for very senior permanent jobs and a resume is more important for junior entry level jobs, including junior doctor jobs, where there may be dozens or hundreds of applicants and you really got to consider that the person reading your resume is only going to be spending about 30 to 60 seconds per resume because they're literally looking through dozens or hundreds. So making sure that your high value items stand out and it's easily read is really a high priority for this particular document. Always aim to keep all of your items down to two pages and for it to appear uncluttered. The second recommendation is to keep it contemporary. We don't wanna have a long historical listing of things. So if you're applying for your internship for the first time, you really wanna have things that have happened in the last two or three years featuring heavily on the CV and very few of things prior to that unless they're really unique um, awards or publications and things like that should stay. And this is particularly important if you're moving into the workforce into a PGY one or two job, you know, by PGY two or three, really wanna be focusing almost exclusively on postgraduate awards and qualifications and accomplishments and generally moving on from the things done in university unless they were research publications or really uh, one of a kind awards or accomplishments. We really don't wanna be having any of your school accolades and things. We don't need your ATAR, that's all done. No one's interested in that anymore. That was to get into university. Now we're kind of even moving on from the university. We don't need to know you got merits. Pretty much everyone got merits. We don't need to know that you were the head boy or head girl. It's no longer relevant because that's like six or more years ago. It's not contemporaneous. You gotta keep it contemporary. Number three is always tailor your CV to your role. So you should be constantly, at least once a year, but maybe even every three months, updating your CV. And every time you're doing a new application, make sure that you're tailoring your CV to that particular role and it's kind of putting more detail into the higher value or desirable elements and less detail in the things that are not gonna be as relevant. I'll give you an example of this, but there was a point where I was applying, uh, I'd applied for a basic physician role and the following year I took a gap year and I applied for a university role and also a locum doctor role. And those three different versions of my CV all within around nine months of each other um, were really quite distinct. So in the BPT or the basic physician training application, it was very much about clinical with a little bit of academic in there. In my university role, I de-emphasized the clinical stuff, had less detail around my placements and didn't really include much mention of my locum shifts. And I really emphasized my passion for teaching, my academic achievements, as well as some of my clinical stuff. And in the locum, they don't really care about research and they're not as interested in my teaching interests. So I really heavily focused on which specific clinical experiences and which particular clinical skills or levels of responsibility I'd had, because I knew that's what those people are gonna be looking for when they read my CV in that context. And lastly, but not least, it's keeping your referees updated. You might change your referees over time. It's really important to have contemporary referees, means that people that have seen you within the last six to 12 months in action, on the floor, in the emergency department, in theater, wherever it is that you're working, to have seen you a variety of contexts and handle lots of different complex issues, not just people that have seen you once or twice in three months and think you're a nice guy. So I've got a separate video about finding um, and approaching really good referees in medicine. Check that one out. But essentially you wanna make sure that when you have got referees and you're saying, I'm applying for this job, you say, hey, I'm applying for this job, um, this is what's involved, would you be happy to still provide a reference for this if necessary? And almost all the time they're gonna be, no worries, thanks for letting me know. And you might send them an updated co copy of your cover letter and CV for any comments they might have. So they're my four particular recommendations. Number one, quality over quantity. Number two, keep it contemporary. Number three, always tailor your CV to the role. And number four, keep your referees updated. I hope that's helpful and I'll see you soon.